Warriors of an ancient order, these monks are the masters of body, mind, and spirit. Through meditation and training, they hone their bodies into the perfect temple. Warriors, wise men, and everything in between. This is the Akashic Brotherhood. As with many of the traditions, the early years of the Brotherhood's history is shrouded in mystery. They claim to originate from an ancient tribe known as the Meru'ai. The Meru'ai were taught a mystical art known as the Way of Harmonious Living by the spirits Dragon, Tiger, and Phoenix. As the years wore on, the Meru'ai became very xenophobic, killing any outsiders who entered the village and warping the way of harmonious living into a force of destruction known as the Doe. This continued for centuries until the nameless man who had left the village years earlier returned and was horrified at what his people had become. He gave a sermon that lasted for three days, warning them that they would destroy themselves if they continued to live as they did. He told them that reality was an illusion, created by the collective beliefs of mankind, and that death was a vital part of one's spiritual journey. On the third day, he sacrificed himself with a bronze knife as a final message to the Meruai people. The man's message soon came to pass, as the vampires of the Kuei-jin hoarded the village's chi supply, and villagers were mass slaughtered by werebeasts. Eventually, the village was destroyed, and those who would later form the Akashic Brotherhood went into isolation and continued to spread the values that the people of Meru'ai had once held so dear. Around this time, different members of the Meru'ai began to drift philosophically. Some joined Thanatoic cults, the predecessors to the Euthanatos, while others thought that killing to push the circle forward was cruel and hurtful to the Wheel of Ages. The straw that broke the camel's back finally came, when a monk named Smoke Tiger caught the Thanatoic mage Ranjit, killing victims of a plague in order to stop its spreading, and was killed in a fit of rage. This sparked off the century-spanning conflict known as the Himalayan War, which I touched on in my previous video on the Euthanatos. In brief, the Akashic Brotherhood attempted to drive the Thanatoic cults out of India, and the Thanatoic cults retaliated by uniting under the banner of the Chakravanti. The war lasted for nearly 300 centuries, and has left both traditions with a lot of bad blood. The next millennia of the Brotherhood's existence was a series of wars and struggles, the Dragon River War against the Kuei Jin, the River Dragon War against the mages of the Wulong and the Daolashi, and the Kamikaze War against the Wulong again. By the time of the Grand Convocation during the Renaissance, the Akashic Brotherhood were, without question, the most powerful tradition in all of Asia. As you might expect, the Brotherhood and the newly rebranded Euthanatos clashed almost immediately. In a surprising turn of events, however, both groups quickly acknowledged the greater threat of the technocracy, and if they didn't bury the hatchet, they at the very least set it aside for the time being. In 1644, after the Ming Dynasty was overthrown, the various supernaturals of China attempted to take out a number of Akashic strongholds in the country. The Brotherhood tried to hold their ground, but was slaughtered by the Kuei Jin and their sorceress elders, the Bodhisattva. The technomancers of the Five Elemental Dragons managed to hold off the Kuei Jin's advances, but the damage had already been done to the Brotherhood's strongholds. The Akashic have made a lot of strides in modern nights, recruiting more non-Asian members for the war against the technocracy, and encouraging cooperation and understanding between the different traditions of the Council. 
When the Week of Nightmares occurred in 1999, the younger of both the Brotherhood and the Euthanatos were crying out for vengeance against those who caused the destruction of the Horizon Realm. Fearing that a second Himalayan War would break out, the elders of both traditions called for an end to the Ascension War. Though the war is officially over, the Akashic are still viewed by their peers as the voice of reason, mediators, and judges, who can still kick ass when the need arises. The lifestyle of the Akashic Brotherhood is dictated by two guiding principles, the active principle of the Jvala Dharma and the passive principle of the Akasha Karma. The Jvala Dharma encourages an ascetic, minimalist lifestyle, as earthly possessions and desires blind a person from their true purpose in life, or Dharma, a term you may recognize from my video on the Euthanatos. The Akasha Karma, on the other hand, encourages seeing other people's viewpoints and putting aside any preconceived notions of reality in order to more easily sense and manipulate the tapestry. Initiates into the Brotherhood often receive a new name, like Raging Eagle, Falling Eagle, Fall Breeze, Battering Ram, etc. These names are meant to dissociate members of the Brotherhood from their own identities and allow them to focus more easily on achieving their Dharma. The Akashic refer to the metaphysic trinity as the ministers of the Samshian, with each of the three phases being personified as a different god. Dragon, which is coincidentally another name for the worm, the villainous eldritch horror and spirit of balance from Werewolf the Apocalypse, embodies entropy, Phoenix embodies stasis, and Tiger embodies dynamism. Every member of the Brotherhood devotes their life to one of these three ministers, vowing to forever follow their ideals. The spells of the Brotherhood are most often used to buff their already impressive physical capabilities through the use of mind magic. As you might expect for characters so focused on, well, focus, Akashic rituals often involve meditation, yoga, herbalism, and similar ideas. Most of their physical foci are weapons for them to channel their energy through. Some further enhance their focus through feng shui or calligraphy, but all Akashic rituals boil down to a single goal, single-mindedly training the body, mind, and spirit to achieve ascension. Being mages that focus on improving the self, there isn't much of a hierarchy to the Brotherhood. They do have ranks they go by, ranging from apprentices to the enlightened bodhisattvas, but that's about it. When it comes to sub-factions, the Brotherhood rivals the Order of Hermes in sheer number and diversity. The largest of these sub-factions include the Nani, wandering mystics and shamans who are more like actual monks than the rest of the Brotherhood. They practice alchemy and yoga, go on quests for spiritual enlightenment, and live solitary lives of introspection. They believe in a doctrine of unity, that all things are ultimately one, and that earthly pleasures and worries blind humanity from this fact. Their magic is diverse, but they're most known for communicating with and exercising spirits, hence their extra focus on spirit magic. The Kanagara monks who put themselves through grueling ordeals and rituals in order to improve themselves. They keep largely out of the Ascension War, and as a result, a number of brothers who tire of the conflict have joined the Kanagata. The Lehi, modernist mages who decry the blind faith most of the Brotherhood have in the old ways and seek to push the tradition into the modern knights. They still follow the core beliefs of Dharma and Akashakarma, but generally shun the idea of the Samshien or metaphysics as a whole, trying more influence from Western culture when it comes to health, morality, and personal enlightenment. The Shi Ren, or benevolent aristocracy, the most politically active members of the Brotherhood. Their magic involves long, drawn-out rituals and extensive use of calligraphy, and is often used to aid their political agendas. They are strictly a meritocracy and often prefer spells aligned with stasis. The Vrajpani, fearsome warriors and martial artists, 
While the rest of the Brotherhood generally prefer to fight the technocracy from the shadows, the Vrashpani are often on the front lines of battle. They're more settled into the old ways of the Brotherhood than other sects, and have only recently begun training non-Asians. And the Wu Lung, ancient sorcerers who commune with spirits. The Wu Lung, or Dragon Wizards, served some of the first emperors of China, and are very proud of their ancient heritage. As such, they didn't join the Brotherhood until 1999, long after the technocracy had conquered Hong Kong. The head of the Wu Lung, Bei Bei Shi, decided that joining the Akashic Brotherhood was the only way to ensure that the ancient ways of Chinese magic were not lost to time. And that concludes our video on the Akashic Brotherhood. Next time we will be... And that concludes this video on the Akashic Brotherhood. Next time we will begin discussing the primal witches of the Verbena. But beyond that, if you like this video, don't forget there is a button for that, and please be sure to subscribe if you want to see more content from me. If you want to support me in a monetary fashion, you can sign up for a bunch of cool rewards on my Patreon, or you can make one-off donations at my coffee. But of course, none of that is necessary. Liking, commenting, and sharing this video with your friends is a good way to help me as any. As always, my name is Lily, and I will see you lovely people. Later.